All right, hey guys, I am going to do another golf clash video for you all, and this one is going to focus on hooking the ball and slicing the ball. Now, when we're talking about this video, um, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is uh, the method I'm using as opposed to necessarily the clubs that you have. So what I typically see in this game is roughly around you know, 30 to 35 yards that you're that you're able to hook the ball or slice it, vice versa. But those numbers, they're going to, you know, kind of change according to wind. You know, downwind versus into the wind. So when you're into the wind, the ball's going to land shorter. So it's not going to be up in the air as long. So you can't go as many rings. So it, there's going to be a large amount of fluctuation. That, uh, you know, you might have to take off one or two rings into the wind. You might have to add one or two wind rings into the wind, uh, downwind. So it's going to cause those numbers that, you know, if you go a certain amount of rings for certain shots, it's going to make it differ slightly. So um, now I did just go through this video and then the audio was so bad that I'm going to go ahead and re-record this. And towards the end of the video... I put Big Topper on my bag, and uh, on my other account, I have Extra Mile right now. And I just wanted to briefly touch on, so one of the, so the way that I end up, you know, playing myself, is I have two Facebook accounts, and they're friends on Facebook. That's basically all there is to matching up with yourself. So I basically just send myself an invite, accept it, and that's all there is to it. For matching yourself um, you just need two accounts to do it apparent uh, like obviously um, the only thing I don't like like you still can't you know pick the holes that you want to match so it's really no real um, extra you know advantage to doing it so let's see here. It looks like, you know, full power. I'm going to run out of fairway over here, but I'm going to go ahead and set up for the hook anyway. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my uh, top spin on my topper. Um, now I've been going about 18-ish rings, more or less, ballpark for this topper. So here's 20 full rings going off my left, my bullseye. I'll come back in just ever so slightly. Um, and you notice I couldn't go, I cannot go max power here. I can't even start to even approach it. So I'm not even really adding any power. Because especially when it starts swinging like that, there you're seeing it kind of right towards the end. And you see it's kind of shooting up towards the green there. So you're seeing a relatively decent hook there. Uh, not too bad. I did about 18 rings on this topper. And, uh... I'm going to set up similarly for this mile, except I'm going to go for this target this time. So I'm going to put the left of my bullseye kind of centered. And you see downwind, it might have just a little bit too much on it. Now with this, I have to worry about over curling this thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my top spin on, but I might not completely curl this max here. So, but again, like I, I probably go pretty close to, you know, that 18-ish, 17 for a mile as well. And again, I'm going to take off just ever so slightly. See if I can't kind of get this in this groove here to hit this other fairway over here. And it looks like I just over curled it or, you know, had a little bit too much power. You're seeing it go out of bounds. Um, but, you know, I'm not really too familiar with mile. So, you know, this would take me some rehearsing to do. Same with topper. I mean, this is, you know, just kind of a shot in the dark. The only reason I even kind of know is because I just did this video and then had the audio show up. It was so terrible that, uh, you know, I have to do it again. How did that miss? Are you insane? That is ridiculous. That should have never missed in 100 years. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so let's regroup here. Um, you know, this time, yep, yep. It's going to be more or less the same. We're going to go for this target again since it's downwind. And again, I'll try to play the wind first. So I'll try to shoot it over. You know, I'll get a little more aggressive 
you know, towards the left here with my bullseye. Instead of putting it in the center here, I'm playing it here to account for that wind. That's less than a ring. But uh, I'm going to full top spin this. And, you know, I'm going to start my correction here. And then I'm going to go, you know, full bullseye on top. I'm going to come back in, a couple extra rings, maybe about two. Again, same type of thing. I'm going to go into the, uh, oh, I have to pull off of this a little, I remember. I'm going to end up over curling it. So Zona, you, you got you to gotta get a sense for how much you can curl things. Oh, no, that was brutal. That was so close to being perfect. I should have just took a little bit more off that curl. Um, and again, it's just going to take some practice. Um, you know, I'm totally winging that shot on the fly. Uh, never done it with extra mile in my entire life. <laughs> so, but you're seeing I'm still able to, you know, kind of execute it. Now, I am going to go ahead just for the sake of this video. You know, I'm going to keep going with this. I'm just going to change my aim. And now you're seeing it into the wind. So this is what I like. Because now you're going to see the dramatic effects. You see, I'm going to be able to probably go full power here. Because... You know, the the fairway two two rings shorter is still there, um, and into the wind this is going to have a dramatic effect. So if I do my hook and I set up here, and again I go the two full bullseyes, which is about here, I'm going to come in ever so slightly on mile. Um, I might come in just a little bit more. Say call this one 17 rings, and it has to do with being straight into the wind. That means I'm taking that extra ring that I was just talking about, and I'm basically uh, you know, coming in an extra ring. Oh, and it was just long. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the fact that my aim was good, it was gonna land perfect, but it was just too much. I needed to take off just a hair of power. Not very much. But I wanted to show you that that aim there was pretty good. So again, I came in just one ring. It was pretty spot on. Instead of going like, I don't know, I've been going right about 18 rings on this mile. And it looks like for that, for that shot, it should have been 17. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing that I want to talk about a little bit is, uh, and, and this is another hole that, uh, you know, we're going to try to hook. You know, there's no real value in hooking this one. Um, well, there is, because you can still, uh, I mean, not with this wind, though. You'd go for the green. But we're going to do this with a hook. As about as opposed to a counter. No, maybe I'll do one with a counter. You know what? Why don't I hook the other one and I'll counter hook this one? Because this will be a kind of a challenging counter hook. So here we're going to try a counter hook. Um, I'm going to try to gain gauge how far that I have to hit this. Um, again, I'm going to do you know about those rings that I was talking. It's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 18ish. Uh, maybe 19 since it's downwind. And you see I'm counter hooking it back to the uh, left. And it looks like my target was pretty good, more or less. And there you have it. It's going right towards the hole. It's kind of straightening it out. Um, that was about 18 rings with a counter hook. Now, one of the reasons that I was able to aim off the cliff was because I was shanking it. So that's the only reason that I could aim off the cliff there is where I was shanking it was still on the island. So had it not been on the island, then that would have never went the way it, where it just went. So I want to reiterate that fact for you guys so you guys understand there what just happened. Um, and let's try this with a hook going this way. I'm going to you know set up right here. And again, I'm going to maybe overplay here. So if I'd usually go 18 rings, maybe I'll go 19 rings just to be on the safe side. Stay away from the cliff, A, and B, it's pointed downwind. So you need to start thinking about going more rings for your adjustment. And again, I'm trying to stay somewhat, uh, somewhat aggressive on the end of the fairway there. And there it is. You saw it right off the edge. Now, all I needed was just a little bit. And you saw 19 rings was kind of spot on where I was aiming. It's right there on the aim. Now, all I had to do is take off some of that backspin. It was just a little too much. But I was trying to thread it in that fairway there somewhere to where you guys could see a nice shot uh, in between. And in case you didn't know, I wanted to touch more about that first shot. 
you're not allowed to aim off cliffs in this game because the way that it points, I don't know if you've ever looked at your shot arc, but let me just show you this in case you haven't seen it. Um, say I was to aim over here on this target and look how I'm aiming past. Look what it's doing to my trajectory. Look how low that trajectory is. You can kind of see it there. It's because I'm aimed off the cliff. Now let me put it back up on the cliff and you can see that it's pointed much better and you can see it especially as soon as it starts to drop down that you your your that downward extra aim just starts to get magnified and you end up hitting it to a lower 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 target so that's why you can't aim off the cliff is the lower you get the more that it starts pointing you downward now there i don't know if you could notice i was I was shooting to a downward target anyway, so it was already, even on the fairway, they're pointing it down. So what that's going to do in general is it's going to make the wind effects much less than you would expect. So the, the most important thing to take from what I'm saying is never point yourself off a cliff. Now I was able to do it there because the shank that I was hitting was still on the cliff. So as long as wherever you're shanking is still on the cliff, you're good to go. And you can use that same principle here. We can do the same principle here if we want to aim for this. Um, now there's no real value in, in, in doing this shot, but I just want you to know that you're, you know, you're able to shank this here over off this. So why don't we just do it just for some fun. Um, we'll aim off the cliff, like I said, there's 20 rings, and that's about 18 rings from my target line. Now I'm going to do this with a little bit. Uh, I, I want to take off just a touch of power because it looked like I was about to run out of fairway. And let's see if I can keep this somewhere on the island. Not terrible, not terrible. So there you're seeing me curve it and keep it on the island. Now with this other one, I'm just going to go down straight with more of a counter curl. Now one of the things that I want to touch on with the counter curl, see if I can grab this pen, this new pen that I have. Oh no, here's the problem, is I can't, once I already have things set up. Okay, so one of the things I just want to touch on here, you see where my shot is. Oh no, every time I go to drag it, it's pulling it. So this is a little challenging to do, but one of the things that I want to mention Picture that being north, picture this being east. After the ball lands, you need to visualize. Now I'm gonna let a couple time out so I can just kind of extend this fault here. But you see where my bullseye is here in this picture. Now when you do the curl, it's going to deflect off in this range. Say this, this little arc here, which is known as east of north, is going to be somewhere between, say, let's say 20 to 45 degrees. Um, depending on whether or not you top spin it, back spin it. And of course, the opposite, you'll see. Uh, what you're going to see me do on my next shot is I'm going to do a counter curl to straighten it out. Now the way that the count, I'm going to draw what the counter curl would do down here real quick. So what the counter curl tends to do is it starts to shoot off more in this, where this is a much smaller number. This is only like 5 to 10 degrees. This east of north number is only uh, 5 to 10 degrees and uh, of your aim point. So up here, when you see my shot, when I go to set up, maybe I'll say I'll set up right here on this fairway, and you see it's kind of shooting off in this direction. I'm trying to estimate what is that, what is that number, and it looks like pretty close to 45 degrees. So I'm looking for a shot that's going to give me, you know, close to that. I don't know if I can get all that to come up if I hit X. Oh, it does. So I hit X. It comes. It all comes up. That's good. Um, so one of the things to get that angle going more towards 45 degrees, 
I'm going to, instead of counter curling, so here's 20, here, I'll come back in on that just a little. I'll just pull straight back, and maybe that'll be about the right arc, I'm hoping. So again, that's gonna shoot in the 30 to 40 degree range to where, you know, if you can visually figure out what's going on there, is it shooting off to the right there after landing. So after I do my 18-ish ring adjustment there, and again, let's think about this in terms of this. So you can do the same thing with these. Let me see if I can't figure this out real quick. Um, so here's, here's a full shot here. And you see where I'm stopping. So if I was to, you know, do kind of a similar shot and try to make this my landing zone, right? So if I was to set up on the right here, so I'll set up there and then I'll go three full bullseyes. Guardian's more accurate, so I like to go about three full bullseyes on this. Now the one thing I want to keep in mind is, you know, I don't want to add any extra power here. Because you saw that the shot really doesn't need it. And you're seeing just a little bit of an overcorrection here, so you're going to see it just shoot out to the left just ever so slightly. So since the fact that I wasn't going full power, it might be, you know, 2.5 bullseyes, for example, whereas full power would be the three that I was just mentioning. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you that just so you could see kind of how the way that the ball reacts. And the same thing here, I'm going to I'm going to try to do that counter curl shot here just so you can get the, the idea of what exactly is happening. So if, if you look at this as my target, and then how I was just mentioning, when you do that counter curl, it kind of shoots off at like a five to 10 degree uh, arc. I'm gonna try to make this my landing zone right here with the counter curl. And I'm gonna go again, you know, three full bullseyes because this has 100% accuracy. So since Sniper has 100% accuracy, I'm gonna do counter curl, I'm going to do that three full bullseyes and see if I can't get it, you know, shooting towards the pin here. And the only thing it looked like I was missing was a little bit more topspin because that was going right towards that sucker. I should have added just a little bit more. I just wanted to show you that just as kind of to kind of start to understand what's happening with these curls and exactly what, you know, from kind of like a physics standpoint of what exactly is taking place and to always factor in what's gonna to happen to the ball post landing. After it lands, what, how is the ball affected? And I, that's why I wanted to show you that little graph on the picture. So I'm almost glad, well, the reason I downloaded this new app was because the audio, I'm just having issues with the other app for whatever reason. So I figured we'll try this out and uh, we'll try it with this and see if we can't get better results. So here, and plus I have that, I have that new drawing tool. I, maybe the other app has it too, but uh, I never really noticed it or could find it. Uh, we'll see how this one treats me. I'm hoping that the audio is a little bit more fluid and uh, we can talk about things a little bit. Uh, and I don't have to worry about the audio being choppy like you've seen in some of my videos. Now again, I'm gonna do a counter curl here, just to kind of show, now the biggest reason for the counter curl is I want to kind of emphasize what you need to do to get this going back towards straight, for instance. So if you wanna know how much you can curl it, you know, you can just play around with it a little. Now see how it's pointed more towards the left it's going to create a little bit extra. So first, let me aim, let me start my aim just like a ring or two to the left here. So you're seeing me aim just start and then I'll do my, you know, two full bullseyes. I'll come in, you know, one or two rings. Not I, I want to lay off how much I'm coming back in this time. And the reason being because it's more downwind, so it should push a little bit farther to the right. And there you're seeing it right down through the middle and the counter curl brings it right back to the fairway. Um, and one of the reasons that, you know, I want to just emphasize that you can start to try to get down this shot like that is for accuracy. You know how hard it is to go full ball and still hit the, 
the nuts, especially on uh, you know topper and uh, mile. They're not accurate at all. So I'm trying to come up with a method that'll cheat you, cheat it for you. Um, the biggest thing is making sure that when you go out, you make sure that you hit it maximum shank because if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. So again, I'm going to use kind of the similar method. These have very similar accuracies. So I'm going to, you know, play it right around 18 rings, somewhere in there. And I'm assuming that it should come back. Nope, I hit the water because it's not long enough to get over the pond. But you could see that it was coming back in the right trajectory there. Uh, but that's okay. No big deal. I just want to kind of show you that, you know, if I put on a power ball that would, you know, alleviate that problem altogether. I just want to point that out for you. Um, and just for, you know, just for kicks here, I'm going to now nah, go for this one. You see where I'm at. There's max club, min clubs way down there. So, you know, three per, three per ring somewhere in there. I don't even need to go ring. And of course, you know, this straight one where it, 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 it would, it makes literally no sense that I, I miss it. What, and this will be the one where I, I end up missing it because it literally makes no sense as to why, you know, with only such a small correction and it's a straight wind. Nope. nope it went in. It's so funny the, the way the, the game works, because I know that, you know, my, adjustments are spot on and then you'll see it like a cup to the right just enough to drive you crazy because it's like okay so there's no way that the ball should be over there so why is it um and that's kind of gonna ruin my ruin my fun a little bit because i'm not going to be able to hit a third shot with this which i really wanted to do so again now we're going to go the other way because the wind's pointed the other way and again, I'm using the left of my bullseye now. And I'm just going an extra ring or two because of the way that the wind's pointed. Now, I'll go those two bullseyes that I mentioned. And I'm going to come in, but I'm not going to come in a lot. It's because it's downwind. So since it's downwind, it's going to tend to go more. It's going to do an over shank, basically. So, you know, 19 rings should be pretty spot on. And there it is. 19 is about spot on. It's Ah! Come on, that has a hundred top spin. There's no way that should have got caught up in that rough. That should have been down there. So a little unlucky. And you saw like I used like 19 rings there. So for example, let me let me talk about the case. Say that was a 10 wind downwind in that same direction. It's gonna go even farther to the left, especially if I did it with curl and not counter curl. So you might even have to go, like, let's say I was doing it with an actual curl and not a counter curl method. Might have to go, you know, 22 rings, for example, on like a 10 wind. Uh, so always keep that in mind. Now this does have a good curl shot on the second shot, but I think on one of these I have Guardian. So I ain't gonna be able to do it. And I can't remember which, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. So why don't I? just beat it down there since I'm not going to be able to go for it in two. I'll just, you know, use this as my target line. I'm going to do a counter coral shot. Again, I'll go, you know, the two rings before starting my adjustment. So I like to play the wind first. And then again, you know, you see, you know, two full bullseyes is there. I'm going to come in a little, but I don't want to come in too much because the wind's pointed that way. Oh no. So I have to be careful with this phone. You saw what just happened. Um, it's possible to pull off the screen, and that's what you saw. I pulled off the screen. Uh, my other phone, since I don't have that worry, I, uh, you know, it's it's an edge. So when you get out towards the edge, it it has never once failed me. But uh, you'll see that S7. You just saw it release on me. I got it screwed there. So again, let's use the. Let's use the counter curl method, but we're going to do it a little differently this time. I'm going to do it with uh, backspin, or at least try to keep it in the fairway. Now, I have to be a little aggressive if I'm going to go counter curl this way. So let's see if I can't pull this off. So if I make this my aim, um, 
Um, I'm going to come in ever so slightly. I don't think I played the wind at first. My goal is to kind of hit the fairway here and cheat it back to the left enough where it actually stays in the fairway. It looks like I pulled it off. So that's pretty good. Well done. I think I forgot to play the wind there. So at the very end, instead of, you know, I, I think I played it more towards the end there. Um, now, just for just for kicks, you know, I'm going to go for the hook shot, you know, and this will get this will start setting up your bear, uh, you know, kind of your, you know, numbers that uh, you can end up hooking the ball. So let's say I play that win, which is about two extra rings. So I'm starting. So let's see if I can't get my bearing set here. And that's about two full bullseyes. And then. I'm gonna go just a little bit extra than that. Two, so I'm gonna go 2.2 bullseyes here. So just keep that in mind for your reference. I'm going max, but I'm doing it with the counter. Oh, that's not nearly enough. So it's probably more, you know, three bullseyes for uh, Nirvana 5 here. When you go to max power. Now it's probably a little bit less when you don't go to max power. So now I do know with sniper, it's about, I usually go about 35 to be on the safe side here. So here you see, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing before I even hit, you know, three extra rings is where the rough is. So I'm going here, here's two full bullseyes, here's three full bullseyes, and then I go an extra half to make 35. Now, one thing that I want to make sure is that I don't add any extra power. Is that I don't, I don't, I can't afford it here. And you're seeing it just, it was a little bit of an overcorrection. Now, that's a little unfortunate because you can get it up on that fairway. It looks like I didn't necessarily get the best fairway bounce either. So, it had less to do with uh, my shot there and more to do with uh, now let's see if I can't you know figure out a method here it looks like you know going pretty much full here more or less you can get this going towards the hole Again, let, why don't we just try it with, uh, you know, the counter curl method. So if I go two full bullseyes with spit three, maybe that'll be not quite enough. I'm going to go two into the wind. I'm going to go 2.2 full bullseyes. Maybe downwind, you know, I'll go more like, uh, you know, three. Oh, it hit the fairway. I can't believe it's that long. I think it's because you're shooting to a lower target. I thought I was going to be able to go full, and that's why I was doing that method, because I thought it would just hit the rough. And then the counter curl would have kept it on the fairway. It was just a little long. And again, that's more just kind of getting your bear. You know, like, I'm not used to hitting those shots, but I'm just doing that for demo in this video. Just so you can kind of start to tinker around with it a little bit. <clears throat> and again, when I'm in the bunker like that, I'm way under a quarter club. I'm not even really going to, you know, play the wind at all. I'm going to, uh, you know, keep it inside cup on a small wind like this and you know let's say hypothetically the wind was three times as much maybe I'd play three times the wind which is still you know right on the edge of the cup it's not outside the cup so just keep that in mind with your wind play I do have a lot of uh, wind play tutorials out there for you where I really broke that down and plus I did break down how to you know uh, a really good method if you want to check out that video uh, with the sand wedge and the wedge and the rough iron that I put out it's a really good video um, that I highly recommend checking out as well for you know if you find yourself guessing on those clubs you can find my other video it's basically called like advanced wind play with those clubs with the, the sand wedge wedge and rough iron that's basically what it's titled so You'll be able to find that pretty easily. Okay, and so I'm on topper again. I'm going to go about two full bullseyes, come in just ever so slightly um, because I want to stay away from the rough a little bit. You know, I want to play this safe. 
So I know it, you know, 19 rings, it's never going to come back enough that it should hit that rough. And you see, I, I left myself at least, you know, two or three rings. Um, I didn't put top spin on because I, again, when I'm thinking about that angle that the ball's shooting off of, and in, in fact, this will be a perfect video for me to kind of demonstrate this. So I'm going to just pull that up real quick. So here was my landing zone, right? Here's my coordinate plane. And you're seeing that's, I don't know, 45, 50 degrees in this case. It's because it's into the wind. So you see how it's into the wind and I didn't use max top spin? I was able to get about four, at least 45 degrees there. Maybe even just a touch more. So keep that in mind. That'll be a nice reference point for you as to what you can actually, you know, do with these clubs. And again, I'm gonna do more or less the same thing here. You know, I'll come in 19 rings, just cheat it just ever so slightly. And again, make sure that you're maximizing those hooks. Again, playing it safe, giving myself those extra, you know, safety. Now, when it's into the wind, like I was mentioning before, it's probably only like a 16 ring adjustment. So that's why, you know, going 19 is completely safe. Um, now, I'll only do it like that typically when, you know, you need to keep it a little bit on the safer side. So I'll play it like that because there's trouble on the right. You know, otherwise I'll go, you know, full... Uh, I'll go full tilt and it won't take off if there's not trouble. Like I'll, I'll, I'll just go the full adjustments. Of course, the shank here is going to make my ball shoot out to the left. <clears throat> Plus, this green, you know, can be really tricky. Plus, the fairway on it, too. So, you have to be very precise with your uh, alignments here. You know, one little correction. I mean, you can see it right here. It's kind of jump. Look at that. I mean, it's jumping all over the place, right and left, right and left. I'm going to avoid those landing spots, but on this hole, it's almost impossible to do that. So I can tell you you want to avoid them, but, I mean, take it for what it's worth. Like, it's not going to be something you can do easily, so. There's a perfect ball. But the question is, like, did I hit the right landing zone? I'm assuming it's pretty solid. You're just seeing it go a little wonky there on the green. It, it looked like it came up over hill and then kind of dropped back over it. So you're seeing it just kind of all over the place. See if I can't get one of these in. We don't really need to go to shootouts. I would rather have more solid content for you guys. Um, you know, the one thing about this app that I don't think I have is I don't have, yeah, I don't have a timer, so I can't. I don't have a sidebar anymore either, so I can't tell how long the video is. So I'm just going to go off a of feel right now and just assume that the video is maybe 20, 25 minutes. I should have paid attention to what time I started the video. Um, but there's still a lot more content that I kind of want to get into. And more has to do... Oh, you know what? Did I back out? Yep, I got out. Alright, so, see if I can't just close that down real quick. God damn it. Now, I'm going to switch to more common drivers. Let's do... No, you know what? I'll do Thor on my other because I'm used to doing it on that one. And I'll use quarterback. I'm not really going to get into Apocalypse because I feel like that's the one that you've probably seen me actually do the shots the most. I'm going to just stay away from Apoc in this uh, video. One of the things that I want to just mention about Apocalypse before we kind of get into this, though, is, uh, you know, the effects of downwind versus into the wind. Now, it's going to be prevalent in your clubs as well, but uh, I just want to let you know, like when I play my Apocalypse, whatever, you know, Apoc 7, Apoc... Oh, jeez. 
So I'm not getting this response. I'm going to go ahead and close the app down, come back in. So when I'm into the wind, um, you know, I might take off how much I'm adjusting. Uh, I'll usually go, you know, my standard is about 2.5 bullseyes, entire bullseyes from, you know, the right edge of my bullseyes. So I'll go, you know, 2, 2.5 total bullseyes for my normal shot. Now, when it's downwind, like this would be a normal shot for what I'm, you know, I'd just play the wind and then add on to that. Let's see here. So first off, um, I just want to figure out how much you know, side spin I can use. I'm going to, I'm going to try to hit a curl here. I'm going to do more of a counter curl. Well, not necessarily counter, but, and what I like to do for these is about 3.5 total bullseyes. Um, but I'll come in just a slight because it's, you know, into the wind. So instead of counter curl, I'm just going to pull straight back because I still want some of that left momentum. So for quarterback here, I'm going about three full bullseyes. It's relatively spot on. And you're seeing that, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't, so if I would have actually used the extra curl, I might have hit the rough. So I'm just trying to, you know, visualize, and it's all trying to visualize those angles that I was mentioning. You know, I told you how it's gonna shoot up at like a 30 to 40, per, 40 degree angle, right? When you put the curl on. So what I was trying to do is minimize that because I can see, I mean, you can see it the way that this fairway is, it's kind of jacking it to the right. So I'm just trying to visualize, well, how much extra right do I need? And it's probably only about 20 degrees. And that's why you're seeing me kind of pulling straight up on my, uh, you know, on my correction. And for Thor's hammer, I like to go 2.0 full bullseyes. You see me go right about here. This should be a pretty spot on. And again, I'll do the same thing. I'll just pull straight back. You just want to make sure that you always, you know, release at the, the end point there. And you're seeing actually, wow, wow. So I got so much power on that. Oh, you know what? That, that's my bad. I, I probably did, wasn't even considering running out of fairway. So that's actually probably my fault. Because if I went full with quarterback and it's right here at the end, it should have obviously took off some. So, oops. <laughs> so one of the things that I want to point out to you on this is uh, when you go over this cliff, you need to make sure that you have enough power to get up on top of the cliff. So if I was to try to take off power for this, you have to be very careful with how much you take off. So what you're going to see me do, I'm going to take off just a touch. You see, I can't even tell if you can even really see how much I'm taking off. It's so little. Because I, I, I really can't afford to take off. That's why. Because like I said before, you cannot aim in the cliff. So you have to make sure, and you're seeing that's just about the right amount. And the shank pretty much cost me, you know, being over there towards the hole. But if you can't reach the top of that cliff, you can't go for that shot. So don't even try it. So if you can't put the little indicator up on top, then don't even think about that shot. And again, now I should be able to, you know, make my correction this time, play this one a little bit smarter, play it with a uh, two top spin, for example. And again, I'm gonna aim here, but I'm gonna play an extra ring or two, especially since it's pointed downwind that way. And then I'm just gonna, you know, find that spot, stack on another bullseye. Aside from that, just gonna pull straight back here. Let's see if I can't get it to hit this fairway just right and shoot more straight. And it looks like I should just put a little touch of counter curl on that. As you're seeing, it's coming up just to the left there. So if I would have just countered it back just ever so slightly. So this kind of just, you know, shows you kind of the effects of that. Here, but I'll get the able to, I'll be able to hit my third shot, so that'll be nice. We'll, we'll try to figure out, you know, a way to, uh, you know, do another curl shot here or something. See what I'm looking at. So, you know, just for kicks here, what was I saying? When I took off power, it didn't quite nearly go as much. I was trying to estimate, you know, how much I can shank. You know, I can start to 
I think last time I went 2.5, was it? And it, yeah, so I think I can go about 2.5 with my curl. Of course, I'm gonna do this with counter curl. I think that should land in the fairway, and it does. That's pretty spot on. You saw the counter curl that I was putting. I'm just doing that for just kind of a reference point. I think when you go to mat, more max power, you might have to add on just a couple rings to that. And it's gonna vary depending on, you know, which Nirvana you have or vice versa. But you know, all the 100% clubs are gonna go about the same. So you can, you can kind of use this trick for Malibu. Well, you can use this trick for any club. But, uh, you know, the reference numbers will be very similar. The only thing that might change is the distance that you can hit certain ones. And again, just for the sake of this video, you know, I'm going to play this a little weird. Uh, first off, let me see what full does. Full seems to be pretty good. It probably won't run out of fairway. So I'll put this right in my bullseye in the center of the fairway. I'll go at least two rings over. And then I'll stack a bullseye. And I'll do this with complete counter curl. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna straighten it out after it lands. It's gonna keep it out of the trouble. And the only thing, the only trouble I might run into, I might run out of fairway if I'm not too careful. So, and, and there you're actually seeing that. Um, you know, you could just take off just ever so slightly on the power, be a little bit more safe. Of course, with quarterback, I won't have to do that. So you see, I'm going to do more, more similar. I'm aim about here. You know, I'll go just a little bit cheated, a little to the right, just for the wind. And again, I'll go. There's two bullseyes. There's three bullseyes. Now I think I can go just ever so slightly more than three. Now, I want to, you know, when it's pointed to the right and it's kind of countering that, I won't go the full 3.5 because I'll usually go like 3.5 here. I'm not going to go the full 3.5 because of the way that the wind's pointed. Let's see if I can keep this out of the trouble. That might actually go in the trouble. It's just, so, again, like maybe th on those counter curls, more like three seems to be the number for quarterback as opposed because, you know, I started cheating it and you, you see it brought the bunker into play. So I get, that's something that if I was actually going to, you know, seriously play quarterback, you know, I could start to hone in on a little bit and say, oh, well, standard number is, you know, 3.5. It would be good to go. So here, just for fun, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start talking about this. So if I go min club here with a curl, um, now the only thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to want to make sure it doesn't start getting out of control here. And it's like I was mentioning before, you know, you can go about three full bullseyes of shank here on this. But I want to avoid how much that I actually start to curl the ball because I don't want it to go out of control to the right. And I ran out of time. It's okay. We'll do it on the second shot. No big deal. Don't really care. Or on the third shot. And again, let's see if I can't, you know, draw something up here that's half decent. So here you're seeing it just be past the hole. It's going to come back because of the wind. But when you do all this curl, it's going to create extra momentum. So you might want to do just a touch bit extra. It kind of outweighs the, how much curl this has kind of outweighs. You know, it, it's going to create a little bit extra momentum. So it'll take off some of that backspin. So here, like I was mentioning before, you know, I got to go at least for, for a fact you know, 3.0 bullseyes, I'll go just a little bit extra. But I don't want to get carried away with how much I'm curling here because I don't want it to start taking off since, I'm, since I have all this backspin. Oh, and you see, I just went two rings, not enough. So this is what I was saying about going that 3.5, just to be in the safe side. If I would have went 3.5, I wish I could, you know, get a mulligan and just redo that shot. Um, but for my guardian, you know, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that extra because the accuracy is lower. So it's, since it's only 90, I, I can go three bullseyes and it'll be plenty, plenty for this. Whereas sniper, you know, you probably want to go that 3.5 and then that shot would have been, you know, spot on for me. 
There's two, there's three. I'm gonna come back in ever so slightly because of the wind. And again, like I was mentioning, you know, you don't wanna get too carried away with all that backspin with how much you curl it. So I'm not like going max curl or anything here. Cause you're gonna see that it's gonna, and you're seeing all that extra momentum. That was, that was perfect for coming back towards the hole. It was just a little deep. And it was because I was right at the short end of Guardian there. And you're just seeing it kind of right on line, but it was just a little bit too much power. And definitely, you know, consider what I was mentioning. So I'm gonna go and get a re a reattempt for my uh, fairway shot here because I really want you guys to see this. Um, I want to do it correct. Uh, I, I, I don't remember if that said if it was the win or not. I'd put it in if it wasn't, but I think that might be for the win. I'm not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, redo this shot. And you see I'm not quite back far down the fairway. I just wanted to show you kind of with the, the accuracy of Sniper. And again, you know, don't be afraid to pull it back to the hole um, even though that it's kind of into the wind and it'll kind of shorten it up um, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is you know that extra momentum that this swing is going to put on it so first I'll play the five rings for the wind so there's five and you know I'm gonna you know be a little bit more you know generous with these ring adjustments this time so you know I have some margin of error here I can, you know, go, you know, 3.5 bullseyes more or less. And here it is. It's coming up more towards the hole. You can see it, how it has all that extra momentum. The hardest thing for me there was setting the right amount of power. So it needed just a touch more power to have the momentum to jump up there. And you saw me, you know, I played way less aggressive, you know, short on the fairway. I played that one a lot better. You know, you have, you have room. To hit it out more towards the middle of the fairway on this hole you don't need to cut the very edge like you saw me the only reason i was cutting it more towards the edge is because i was just trying to show you basically you know especially when you go to full power like that um the proper adjustment so if i aim for the side of the rough there or very close when it actually goes to the side of the rough like very close, you can see that that's more or less the proper adjustment. Just a little bit off. You know, I went a little bit too much with the adjustment. Oh no, how did I get a draw? This pisses me off. Ah, I can't believe I did that. Totally not paying attention. So. Let's go ahead. I'm going to, uh, you know, do another curl shot for you guys. Uh, it's a little bit tougher with this club because it's so accurate. But again, it's kind of in that same type of thing. So I'm trying to visualize first off. So I have the backspin, right? So I'm trying to visualize that 45 degree arc that I spoke of here. So here is the point. So you see my bullseye is kind of my target at where like 45 degrees will happen. So I'm going to set up to that and then I'm going to go, you know, this is a very accurate club. You go around 3.5 bullseyes, come a little bit in for the wind. I'm just going to do this with some uh, curl. And here you're seeing it just a little bit too much. And more, more that what you're seeing too much is just post ball trail that you're seeing. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to estimate how much that run out is going to happen after after the shot takes place and let's see if i can't do this with the saturn too and plus with the other backspin you know that really changes your angle that it comes back so here let's see if i can't do this with five backspin here and the same type of thing like i'm trying to visualize you know 45 degrees east of north here so like right in between and then i'll just set up first i'll start here 
I was using my target line and then I switched it to the right of my bullseye. And with Saturn, I'm not gonna have to go as much. I don't know how much I have to go with Saturn. In fact, I should have been paying attention because wherever I aimed with the other club, I should have aimed with Saturn. And you're seeing there, I just went deep. It looks like the aim was actually pretty spot on. But my accuracy is way different. So you see, I only went maybe 2.5 bullseyes. But here's the thing to, to take from it, more so than anything. Wherever I aimed the one, and it was pretty spot on, I just needed to aim Saturn at that exact same spot. Forget rings. They can both only shank the same, the same amount. So I want, to, I want you to understand that point, and that's why with every club, it's different. So here, now we're playing this hole with quarterback. I'm gonna get, you know, pretty aggressive on this right side here. Um, you see what I have spin-wise, it looks pretty good. I might just use a little bit of top spin, um, especially since it's, uh, you know, into the wind just a touch. I'm gonna visualize, I'm gonna visualize, you know, five rings for the wind and try to get this aggressive on the cliff here. Here's, you know, that many bullseyes, that's two. I need to still go another. And then on top of that, I need three. So I go 3.5 when I'm doing full curls here with quarterback. So 3.5 with a full curl. You're seeing, you know, I left enough and I left enough there that was probably an extra five rings just to be on the safe side. You know, I was very generous with the way that I was moving to be safe. It's better to be safe than put it in the cliff. It seemed to be a little bit more safe and same with here, you know, I only need to be two rings to the, you know, I'm gonna go at least three rings to the right here, to the right of the cliff there, at least three rings. And then I just need to stack one more bullseye on top of that. And then since it's pointed that way, I'm just gonna add just ever so slightly. And, if, and of course, you know with my Thor, you know, I really don't have to go more than two bullseyes. Let's see if I can't get a little more aggressive with the aim. And I did, and I just put the wrong back, I put backspin on it. So it looks like I my landing zone was more spot on. You know, I'm more familiar with this club. So you're seeing I'm a lot more precise with the aims because I'm used to actually playing hooks with this club. Now let's see if I can't go about a ring here. Pop this up down towards the hole somewhere. Ah! So I went one ring and then shanked it two. It's gonna put me way off my arm, way off my aim there. Let's see if I can't get this again. Put this in the cliff last time. So one of the things that I usually do is I like try to size it up. I just try to get a nice visual as to what will what will kind of land in there. And I'm going to do three three back spin. It's a little downwind. So notice how I'm putting it more off the cliff because the wind's coming back. So I'll make this my normal adjustment. You know, two rings from the edge. And you know, I know I can be very you know aggressive with with Thor. So you're going to see me actually get more aggressive with Thor. You know, this is going to be more exact aim, where you're going to see me right towards the edge of the cliff. And again, I did the same thing. I didn't put enough top spin on to actually, you know, keep it in play. Did it twice there. So, you know, it's not my aim that's making me screw up this shot. It's trying to hit the fairway. That's because, you know, I could blow it long like you saw me do on my other hook. But what I'm trying to do is, you know, hit more precision shot. You know, I'm thinking too much like Apocalypse and quarterback. They have more curl, so they swing around harder. So I'm so it has enough speed the way that I was doing it. Since Thor, Thor doesn't really have the curl, it really doesn't need backspin at all. In fact, it probably needs topspin. And again, you know, I can kind of get a little bit more aggressive with my aim and then go two full bullseyes there. Should be relatively close to the edge of the cliff. And this time it doesn't have the backspin. I'm assuming I'm going to keep this one in play at least, at the very least. Barely. Jeez. Still could have used some topspin. 
And it's because it's not swinging nearly as hard as my Apocalypse. So my, my Apocalypse swings so hard that it creates so much extra momentum that it still makes it to the fairway. It's the big difference between, so that's one of the things that, you know, I can recommend is, you know, consistently playing with one shot, one club. You just saw I was, I played those three shots with Thor. All of them were very aggressive on the landing zone. They were all really great landing zones. I just didn't know how to spin it because I, you know, it, you, you never play that shot to where you actually hit a hook. But you could see that I was very precise with, with my landing zones. They were very good landing zones. So what I'll do here is I'll also take off some top spin when I do this hook because I don't want to run out of fairway. And I have to get quite aggressive on the right again. Um, but you are shooting to a lower elevation here. So I just want to point out that you might want to start your adjustment, you know, two rings left of where you think. So instead of starting right on the edge of the fairway, see how I'm starting it more in the middle? And I'll play it like this, two full bullseyes from here. And I know that this is probably going to start cheating to the very right of the fairway. This might actually get very aggressive on the right side. And there you're seeing it. You see how it kind of landed. It's because of that extra downhill. you got to be factoring that in on this tee shot. So I knew that was going to happen. And, you, you know, I was just factoring it in into my, you know, a little overcorrection. Instead of going two there, I'm going 2.2 rings, for example. And you're actually seeing on this shot, I can't even reach this other fairway. Now, I probably can, to be honest with you, but I just need to land it more here. So I have to think about a shot that lands more there. So I'm going to start more towards the middle of the fairway here. And again, i got to go at least probably the 3.5 that I've been mentioning. So there, there, five extra. It's because it's going to create all that extra swing because it's a downhill elevation. So it'll go beyond what you're used to. Now the question is, and you're seeing it come up short, it doesn't have enough momentum to actually carry to that spot because it's into the wind. It's going to a lower elevation, so it's taking more wind in and it doesn't actually get to the spot. So you saw it come up short there. And again, one thing that I wanna mention about this one is it's a little bit opposite of what we just faced there. This one goes a little bit more into the um, uphill. So when you're doing your adjustments on this hole, you need to add, you need to subtract how much you actually win play. So what I would usually do would be, you know, at least half a ring. I'm going to go a little bit less than half of a ring here for my correction. Again, I just got to add ever so slight power because you could see it was coming up a little short there. So instead of going, you know, a little over half of a ring, I'm staying a little under half of a ring. And you see it still comes up a little bit to the right there, even with that correction. <clears throat> now, we can try this with a hook shot too. Now you want to make sure that second shot's going to hit the rough. So that's kind of what I'm calculating here. So I'm going to try to make sure, I'm trying to visualize into the wind how much shorter it's going to land and make sure that the second hop hits the rough. Now I'm trying to pick a landing zone, like I said last time. Let me pull out this tool again so I can talk about this. I'm trying to pick out a landing zone. It didn't give me the tool. God damn it. Okay. I'm trying to pick out a, a landing zone going to you know that's 45 degrees and that's more or less you know what I'm looking for so in terms of starting this next shot now I should still be able to pull off this shot even with the next time even though I made this because the other one should so we'll both be on our third shot I just want to mention that I'm kind of trying to visualize 45 degrees so I'm gonna put my target kind of where I want that, here, here's the point that it's about 45 degrees. Now my wind's completely different. This is gonna swing much harder. So I'm gonna put it more towards the river here. You're gonna see I'm using backspin on this because I want to make sure that it's either close to the rough or hitting the rough or else it's gonna run through this green. So I want to get very close 
to the water on this one, which kind of defies logic. And then again, I'm going to do more or less what I just mentioned. So I'm going to go, you know, those 3.5 bullseyes. I'm going to just swing this as hard as I can. And what this does is it creates all that extra momentum. So you're going to see, even though I was aiming more towards the river, you're seeing, look how much long it's still more than the river. And that's why I was trying to make the landing zone a little bit less. Because I wanted to cheat that river as much as possible because I knew that swinging it like that was going to create all that extra momentum. And like I said, with the backspin, I knew that that where my landing zone was going to be, it was going to be at least a 45 degree angle. And you could see I was kind of picking the 45 degree angle. I could have got a little bit more aggressive and, you know, picked like a more of a landing spot that would have been, you know, a 55 degree angle or vice versa. Instead of putting my full curl on that, I could have just did it with like a partial curl to kind of slow it down a little bit. So keep that in mind too. And I'm assuming we're kind of getting towards the end of an hour here. In fact, my battery on this, my other phone's getting way down there. So for this hole, you know, I'm trying to do that same visualization thing that I was mentioning before. I'm trying to pick an angle that's going to be, especially with Thor's, you know, 30 degrees to the right. So I see that right around half the fairway here is probably pretty spot on. So if I cut this fairway in half here and land more towards the middle, it's going to be a pretty good target. So if I aim more for the middle of the fairway here and then go full hook, I'm assuming, you know, if I do everything right, that it won't have enough swing, that it's going to come at a pretty good arc. And there you see me landing at the, the middle. And you see it kind of shooting up where I wanted it. It almost hit the rough there. I could have got just a tad bit more aggressive. And one of the reasons that I probably messed that up is it really didn't have, you know, a lot of curl. I could probably do more of that landing zone with this quarterback. And it'll probably be more spot on. I should be able to go full spin here. And again, I'll probably use that same landing zone as it's probably pretty good with quarterback. With, with Thor, it doesn't quite shoot at that 45 degree angle, 30, you know, 35 degree angle. So I'm going to kind of cheat the middle of the fairway here as my target zone and again since it's into the wind instead of going the usual three point you know five bullseyes maybe i'll go 3.2 bullseyes i need to start cheating it in because it's into the wind it's not going to land as far um so you're seeing that's right around mid fairway it's swinging it's pretty good uh i just used too much top spin Almost stopped that in the fairway pretty good. You almost see a pretty good, decent shot there. So in terms of this one, um, I like going for the dunk when I'm in the fairway here. So here you're seeing min club, here you're seeing max. I'm right about half club. Um, the reason I like to go for the dunk here is it's a very jacked fairway. I'm more towards mid club, which is about three per ring, but it's uphill. So I'm not even gonna go three per ring. I'm going to go probably, you know, almost four per ring here because it's so much to an upper elevation. So let's see if I can't, you know, groove this in I'm pretty decent. The reason I go for the dunk is because even if it misses, it doesn't hit the pin, it's still on the green, and it's easier than the pitch. The dunk there is easier than the damn pitch. And it defies logic but it's just the way it is i do the same thing from the rough i still go for the dunk as long as it's you know a club that i can stop it so first thing i might do is i might size it up i see you know i'm half club i might play you know very similarly here usually i'd play maybe 3.6 per ring here but i'm not even going to go half a ring here for the same reason it's uphill it's not going to get affected so instead of going you know half a ring I'm going to go a third of a ring, so I won't even play this much. I'll cheat it in even more, more like there. Again, I want to be very careful with the, am I putting it in the center of my circle? And I was cheating it back to the left a little bit. I think depth-wise we were good. You want to make sure that you're not adding or subtracting power. You can do a touch of curl, and you're seeing me do that there. 
you want to make sure that you're not taking off power and adding power when you do it. So let me do one more hole for you guys here. Um, we're coming up on the end of this video. I feel like I've kind of covered a lot of the sh different shot types here that you can kind of utilize with this hook curl stuff. So let me go ahead and just blow one of these in the bunker because I want to talk about you know, with the Thor I'm just going to aim for the bunker. You know two full rings with a counter should take care of that. Oh wow, I missed it. So it probably had to do with the way that that wind was pointed. Let me hit the other one in the bunker. I'll do it with an easier shot since I missed it there. That's okay. It'll give me one rough, one bunker because I wanted to, something I haven't really touched on too much. I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I had enough, enough of these shot types in that you guys could, you know, get an idea of of these as well. I felt like I didn't have enough of these in this video. Oh Jesus. You gotta be kidding me. How can you aim for a bunker and not hit it? I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy. <sighs> but anyway, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and again, this is gonna go uh, back to that angle thing where you're trying to visualize you know, first off, I got to get my spin set. So what you'll see me do is I'll try to set my spin over to the side here to figure out how much this thing's going to side spin. And you know, I feel like I have to get kind of aggressive on the right side here uh, because you know that 45 degree angle that I'm talking is very close to the bunker. So it'll be hard for me to if I'm not aggressively hitting it to the left here. It's never going to make it back to the hole with this hurl, with this curl, and you even see I barely have any curl. So again, I'll go about 2.5 bullseyes, and there you have it. It's going kind of at the hole. It was about 2.5 bullseyes off of, and you saw I was getting kind of close to the bunker there with my adjustment, and that was pretty spot on. And you know it'll be cheating more towards three when you get into the rough. And another thing to consider is there's levels of rough. I think you'll get into a certain level where it's like deep, deep rough, where it'll go even farther. And that's where you'll see me make a mistake. It'll go more like a bunker. It'll be more like three rings per. So I just want to talk about that. And I think that's what you saw in the one hole that I actually did get a nice rough shot. I think it was in the deep, deep rough to where it went more than 2.5 bullseyes. I just want you to be aware of that too. There's varying level of rough where, you know, it'll let you shank more. So you're seeing I need to do three bullseyes as opposed to 2.5. I think you saw me do that on that one hole. If you can go back to one of the shots where I completely missed, I think that's what was happening there. As you know, I was in the deep, deep rough. So again, I want to talk a little bit about... Uh, you know, especially once I start to put top spin on this, because you see I need to add top spin to get this to the hole. So it's going to change my shot arc a little bit. So I'm trying to visualize, you know, this top spin. I'm going to have to get again. I feel like I need to get pretty aggressive here, or I need to really, you know, start over curling it. So I might just aim more over here with some over curl, just to be on the safe side. Make sure I miss the bunker. So again, I'll do this. I'll probably do 2.5 bullseyes. Um, now usually I might, you know, full start slamming this curl, but I, I, I don't want it to get too out of control to where it goes too far left. Uh, and there you're seeing it. Because it did shoot very close to the bunker. So it was a little under correction. And it has to do with, you know, all that extra. You saw that carry so much extra. You saw it almost hit the bunker. So my landing zone would have been good, but it looks like, you know, 2.5 bullseyes isn't quite right. It's more towards 2.8, maybe, bullseyes for this club. So just something to consider. 
um, I am going to go ahead and you know close this video down uh, I, I feel like I've you know encompassed most things for you guys uh, and you got you guys got a very good visual here uh, you, get, you got to see me right on the screen a couple times you know talk about a little more advanced topics uh, that I want you to keep in mind um, and aside from that uh, the, the the one thing that I want to stress is you know the importance of wind um, especially when you're doing curl shots so let's say you know the winds pointed with the way of the curl it's 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 acting downwind even if it's a side wind so let's say you have a side wind and you know you're curling with it I want you to you know keep that in mind and make sure that you're over adjusting your rings let's say for 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 usual that I go you know two 20 full rings two full bullseyes for my Thor hammer shot right well let's just say you know it's pointed you know in the way of that curl I'm not gonna go you know the usual 20 maybe I'll go 22 rings and then still on top of that I'm gonna play whatever the wind is so let's say hypothetically it's a five wind and you know it's pointed just slightly down and it's you know with the curl as well so instead of going you know playing you know three extra rings for that curl since I'm going full power maybe I'll go three plus the two extra rings that I mentioned you know going an extra you know four 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 ish yards because it's downwind so all in all I'll go you know 2.5 bullseyes for say five downwind So I'm, you know, accentuating that. Plus, you know, post ball trail, it's going to add a little bit to that too. So you need to keep that in mind. Instead of it coming at that, say that, you know, a Thor doesn't have so much curl, it might shoot at that 30 degree angle I was talking about, to where it would be east of north, like, you know, 30 degrees. Well, maybe, you know, with that extra, you know, downwind, it'll shoot even farther than that. It'll shoot, you know, more towards the 35, 40 degrees. Um, more like that quarterback. I mean, you see the the, the two arcs between my uh, quarterback and Thor's because of that extra curl. So you got to account for that. You know, that quarterback shoots more at like a 40 degree angle with the full top spin on there. And then keep in mind, you know, you can cheat that angle to where you can start to over curl it even more by putting on backspin one. Or two, no top spin. So those are two contributing factors that will let you cheat that angle to where you can over curl even more. Um, and for instance, you know, if I wanted to do it with backspin, I could cheat it even farther. So, you know, I could start to approach, you know, 70, 80 degrees if I did a full backspin shot. We didn't really get to, uh, any shots to where, that's the thing, they don't have, they haven't designed too many holes where, you ever need that much of you know sh shot correction but uh, if you ever want to you know really accentuate the way that you can bring in that curl shot do it with backspin if, if there's ever a shot which there's hardly ever a time because really none of the holes are designed to have that much curl but if you ever need that degree to be you know cut straight sideways where you could get like 70 80 degrees cut just do it with full backspin and then wherever you land it like from that point that it lands especially from like a rough shot or a bunker shot so that's the thing once my spitfire gets up to a certain level i'll start to be able to even bring that backwards once my spitfire is a you know level seven and i have you know 60 some backspin i can actually you know start cheating that you know 90 degrees I'll be able to bring it straight sideways off of the land Now, there's hardly any use for that in in the way that the game is set up currently but uh, you never know maybe they start implementing some holes there is a couple times uh, where you see holes that have that much curl it's just there's usually not a bunker there and you know for the most part you know guys aren't really thinking about that shot but uh, I just want you to I just want to point it out that you know it is it is highly possible that you can just pull out some unreal shots. And again, as soon as my if my Spitfire goes to a seven, you know that's that's the point that you'll you'll be able to do something like that. So 
for example, um, so you won't be able to do it with much length, but with a machete. That would be a perfect example. If you pulled out a machete, you could start hitting 90 degree, you know, wherever it lands, you can start getting the ball to, you know, curl, say 30 yards of that spot, and then still come back to that target line which just creates kind of a sick shot to think that you could get it to go that much, you know, to the right. So keep that in mind. And the other point that I really want to stress before I end this video is the other point was, you know, straight down wind. So we didn't really have too many high, high winds here. But I just want you to consider the fact that, say it's 12 miles per hour down, for example, or 10, 10, 15 miles per hour. So, for example, if I need to hit a curl shot with my apocalypse, you know, instead of going, I usually go two and a half bullseyes with my normal puck shot. It's because it has so much curl, it has, you know, just all kinds of things that you need to keep in mind. And, uh... I just want you to think that, uh, you know, you're downwind like that and you just want to add those extra. You, you want to be considering all those extra uh, rings, downwind versus into the wind. So, you know, I might go, you know, 2.5 on the normal. Say it's 10 downwind, I'm going to go at least three full bullseyes minimum for my apocalypse shot. So... Uh, if it go, you know, if it goes to 15 miles per hour, especially, you know, getting towards the snow globe territory, you know, snow globe at 15 miles per hour, I might go full bull, four full bullseyes. That'll be the landing zone. And then on top of that, think about how much the trajectory is going to change from my shot. You know, it's going to be, it's going to shoot at like a 45 angle, 45 degree angle on top of that from the landing zone. So all things that need to be considered... And, uh, you know, into the wind, it's going to have an opposite effect. So, for example, on winds that are straight in the face, say it's 10 miles per hour, like I was just mentioning, straight in the face. I have Kingsmaker on or whatever to try to counter it. Uh, I'm not going to go the 2.5 that I usually go with my Apocalypse. So it's it's going to be very consistent with your other clubs. So just keep this in mind. Uh, you know, I, I might not even go two full bullseyes. I might go, you know, two full bullseyes on something that's dead straight into the wind. And it'll be relatively spot on. Um, in the case that it's, you know, pointed slightly even, even harder. Let's say it's 10 at 730. And, you know, I'm curling it left to right. Well, that's going to be straight into the face even more than the straight into the face wind. Which is, you know, at 6 o'clock wind. So it's going to be even harder. Because... Not only is it straight in the face, but it's countering my curl too from coming back. So I won't be able to go even as far back, even more so. So in, in that case, maybe I'll only go 1.8 full bullseyes, 1.7-ish, somewhere in there. Um, and, and keep in mind that, you know, the landing zone, it's, it's not even going to be as far. It's not going to land as far as your target either. So you have to always make sure that your landing zone is okay too. Because you're not going to be able to land it to that full bullseye. You won't even get within 10 yards of that. And, and you got to remember that that's not coming straight back. It's coming back at an angle. Because it's not carrying to that bullseye. Instead of coming straight back, it's going to come back. Like in that example, it'll come back left of that target. So it's going to land more left. In addition, to, and, and that's more so of the reason that you're taking off those rings. Because it's coming back at an angle. So when you, you know, you're trying to visualize how much of an angle it's coming back at. And you're taking off those rings because of that. So again, like, like I said, you know, I'll cheat. When the winds get up high, you know, the, there's not a standard formula. You have to always be thinking about the wind on top of the curl that you're hitting. So it's always constantly changing. And that's one of the reasons that so many guys are having problems with these um, these shots here, these hook shots, is because you can't just say, um, 
you know, statically at, you know, 2.5 bullseyes. I'm going this and it's always going to do this. You know, you have to always be dynamically thinking like things are always constantly changing. Like I might go uh, 2.5 here, but if it's downwind like this, I need to adjust that number. I need to play 3.0 bullseyes. I need to play 2.0 bullseyes. It's all going to be dependent upon all these other contributing factors. And it always comes down to wind. So you always need to be thinking about how this wind is going to affect my ball. So if you can just have a visual, you have to always be constantly visualizing what that wind is going to have effect on my ball as opposed to where the thing's going to actually land. And that's going to dictate how many rings you need to go. And like I said before, it doesn't matter whether you're using a puck, quarterback, anything. If I would have just, you know, said, oh, I'm aiming at this tree, this wind is going to take the ball there, uh, that's going to be universal. If I hit that shot with any club, now the only thing that's going to change is how much it's curling. Um, but, you know, if I aim at that one tree for Thor's hammer, and, you know, quarterback has the same distance. It's going to land on that same spot if I hit the exact same hook, the same full hook shot. It'll go the same. Now, there's going to be some other factors that are going to change. You know, how much it curls because the curl's different. So the angle that the ball lands is going to change. So you always have to keep in mind, like, and if you want to just visualize, and one of the best ways that you can do that is with a picture. Take a screenshot. If you see where your ball is after you did a full hook, document that. You know, take a screenshot when your opponent's about to hit. Take a picture of where your little icon is. Say, I landed it here. My ball went there. And just say, what is that angle that it shot up at? And it's just one of the things that you can learn from. As you'll say, you know, my ball always shoots up at this angle with, and kind of with a similar wind. That's always going to be changing with different wind conditions. But it's just something that will help the learning process. Uh, so it's something to always keep in mind. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. And, uh, you know, good luck with your uh, wind calculations and figuring all this stuff out. Uh, hopefully this video has helped you... Uh, you know, at least come up with a game plan of how you want to approach hook shots and, you know, coming up with your own strategy for playing these hooks. Um, and again, one of the things that I, I want to emphasize is if you're going to do the full hook shot, make sure that you're hitting it at the very end of the full hook. You know, if, if you're not consistent with your release point, your hooks aren't going to be consistent. So make sure it's always at that absolute maximum when you're doing your hooks so you got to be very precise with your timing so uh, if you have any other comments or concerns feel free to add them to the uh, comment of the video uh, I'll do the best that I can to answer them if you haven't subscribed already feel free to do that as well uh, good luck with everything and uh, hopefully uh, this video has been beneficial and uh, you are more inclined to you know increase uh, your win percentage with uh, pulling off some of these uh, crazy hooks. So good luck out there, and uh, let me know how it goes.